Okay, so as I mentioned, this code doesn't seem to do much. It just calculates one to the other. What we want to do really is automate that. But before we do that, we can refine our code. So how do we get into Visual Basic? Well, you can hit Alt and F11 at the same time, and it should open you up to this. Now, a quick little tour of Visual Basic. Over here on the left, you've got all your projects. So this is where your open Excel workbooks will be and any other kind of macro add-ins. So BPM Traverse, which is an add-in I have, that's in there. And we've got this project here and then another add-in that I've got. So here you've got all your actual sheets. And here you've got the module, which is where the code is. So if you double click on this, it should bring up something which looks like this. Here you've got the properties. So for example, if I double click on, let's say the castle waterfall, you've got a bunch of properties here, which are editable. For example, make the sheet visible. You could make it hidden or very hidden. So if you make it very hidden, Alt F11 out, we've lost our cache or waterfall. And if I right click, there's no option to unhide. So that's a little trick, which showcases what you can do in the properties section. So I'll set that back to visible. Anyway, where we want to be is double click on module one. And here we have the code. So what is the code? Well, Here's the subroutine, debt size, that's the name of our macro, and it's put two brackets afterwards. And then end subroutine. So the instructions are contained within this. And then it's got a bunch of apostrophes, which indicate that these are comments, they're non-executable. So we don't actually need all these comments here. We don't need to know a debt size macro. I already know that it says debt size there, so I can just delete that. And here's my description. This macro bridges the funding circularity, blah, blah, blah. I can keep that in because it's nice to know. And then delete that. I'm just going to add an enter here. Okay, so here's the instructions that we performed. Remember, we did four steps. And then the last step I did was I selected a cell. I told you that whatever you do, whatever action you perform, the macro will record it. So we can delete this one. It's not necessary. So here we're editing, we're paring down the code. So I call this refining the code. Recording the macro is really good to get us to the starting position. So let's talk through this code. Firstly, you'll remember that we selected a range and that range was located in cells E15 and E16. So this is how Excel interprets the instructions of selecting those cells. It says range E15 to E16. Even if it's a single cell, it'll still say range. You need the syntax exactly with the bracket and then the quotation and then the actual range itself then the quotation, the bracket. Now what does it do? Well, it says dot select. So whenever it says dot something, it's performing an action. So with this, then dot perform the action, the action is select. Then what did we do? We copied it. So with that selection, the action is copy. So that was step two. Step three was select the next range, and then in the F column, select it. And then with that selection, we did a paste. Not any paste, we did the paste special, and we pasted values. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can refine this code slightly. Instead of selecting and then copying the selection, what we can just do is just copy it straight away. So I deleted the copy and then the select the select and the copy, you can just copy that range straight away. And the same with this next one, we don't need to select it. And then with that selection, do something with it, we can just do something straight away. So and by the way, this has real world implications for how quick the macro runs. So this will have roughly sped up the macro by two times. So it's much quicker to perform now. And paste special paste values, blah, 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 lots of stuff. Now, we don't need all of this stuff. If you remember from the paste special box, there's a whole bunch of tick box options, like do you want to perform an operation like add or multiply? Do you want to skip the blanks? Do you want to transpose it? And it said these are false. Strictly, I don't need those because the standard option is for them to be off anyway, the default option. 
So we've paired our code right back to basics. You can see it's a lot cleaner. You can probably interpret a lot easier. And let's check it still works. So Alt F11 and delete these. Hit that and it still works. So that's perfect. Okay. So we've refined the code, congratulations. And we've probably sped up the overall macro by two times. And it's way, way, way cleaner to read and to see what's going on.